All right, good, uh, good day, everyone. Um, what I'm going to do today is I'm going to explain the summary questions in our parallax lab. So before I do that, though, I imagine some of you were probably absent during the actual data collection portion of the lab. Uh, so I'm going to go over that for you guys. Uh, so you have some basic understanding of what we did when you were absent. So what we did uh, when you were absent is we took some data that um, we took some data that represented um, the concept of parallax. So what we did was your classmates took a manila folder and taped it to a wall. And on that manila folder were a series of lines. And then a one group member uh, held a pencil at a designated position from the wall. And then another classmate acted as the observer and they observed the pencil with their right eye and then they observed the pencil with their left eye. So the observer stood here and they looked at it with one eye and then they looked at it with another eye. And so I'm gonna draw some lines that represent, that represent uh, what they saw. So they looked at the star with both eyes. And then on the, the card, there were a series of numbers and they identified what numbers they saw um, the pencil at. So then they stepped back and they did it again. They did it again at a greater distance from the object. And they then saw the pencil at a different spot, like so. So you can see that the space between the two observations decreased. So they did that with one of the activities. And then uh, the other activity in the lab, they again started with the card on the wall. And then there was an object, a pencil that they looked at. And then the observer looked through a card that had four holes in it. So when they looked through the card at the pencil through each of the holes, they looked this way and saw it, the first, uh, the pencil here at the first location. They looked at the pencil through the second hole and saw it here. They looked at the pencil through the third hole and saw it here. And then the fourth hole and saw it here. So they then compared the parallax shift at the different what are called baselines. This is the baseline right here. So the parallax shift at this baseline is right here. And then when they increased the baseline, the parallax shift also increased. And then when they increased the baseline that last time, looking through that final hole, the parallax shift increased even more. So that's what they did in the lab. And they obtained data similar to that. So this data here is for the first setup. And this data is for the second setup. So the first data shows a parallax shift that got smaller 
as they moved further away from the pencil that they were observing. The second set of data shows a parallax shift that got bigger because the distance between the observations increased. The distance between the observations increased. So that's what the data shows that you received uh, with your lab paper. Now, inside the lab paper, there are a series of questions that you need to answer and then do a drawing that represents the answer. And actually, you might want to do the drawing first and then answer it because the drawing itself will help you answer the question. All right, the first question is, what is the effect on parallax when the distance from the object being observed is increased? So the object we're observing is right here. Object observing. The distance from the object is in this direction. Distance from object. So we want to increase the distance from the object. Uh, a couple other things. This is the baseline. This question doesn't tell you to do anything to the baseline. So the length of the baseline has to remain the same. We can't change that. And the parallax will be observed here. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're going to increase the distance from the object. So we need to move this way. So I'm going to draw, I wanna make sure that I keep this length the same. So I'm just gonna draw a couple lines like this to represent keeping that, that length the same. There, so I've increased the distance. So this distance, has now been increased to this distance. And now these are my new points that I observe the object from. So I'm going to draw, I'm going to look at that object and I'm gonna represent that by drawing a line from the observation point through the object. It's very important that you go right through that same point to the background. And then I'm going to do the same from the other observation point. I'm going to start at the object and make sure I look at the object and I represent that by drawing right through that point. And then I go to the background. So what happened was the parallax shift got smaller. So this is the new parallax shift from here to here. It started out from here to here, but it got smaller. So the parallax shift decreased. So that's the answer up here, decreased is the answer. All right, the second one says, what is the effect of an increased baseline on parallax? So this is the baseline. So if you're, I labeled this one up here, this is the baseline. This is the baseline and I want to make it longer. Now, it doesn't say anything about changing the distance. So I don't go this way to make it bigger. I don't go this way to make it smaller. All I'm doing is increasing the baseline. So I'm gonna make it longer. Now the two points that I'm doing my observations from are here and here. So I'm going to observe the object, which is right there. I take and I put my ruler at my first point of observation. And then I wanna look at the object. So I need to take my line and draw right through there. And then I'm gonna do the same thing here. 
I'm gonna, this is where I'm doing my observation. I'm looking at that. So I need to take my line and draw it right through there and my ruler wiggle. So my new parallax shift is this. So now the parallax shift is this whole length right here. It started out as only this, and now it's bigger. So it got bigger, it increased. And that is the second question. All right, those are the two demos. Let me make a few comments about the other ones. All right, question three. Uh, you have to increase the baseline and decrease the distance. So you're doing two things. For question four, you decrease the baseline and increase the distance. So again, you're doing two things to your drawing. For question five, you increase the baseline and you increase the distance. You're doing two things to your drawing. And the question says there are several possible answers. Show me. This one's worth more points than the earlier ones. So the reason it's worth more points, five points instead of three, is there are several possible answers. Show me. So you need to show me at least one additional result. Two, at least two possible answers here. The same way with number six, what would happen to parallax if you decrease the baseline and decrease the distance? You're doing two things to your drawing and there are several possible answers. Show me. This question, is it possible that you could move so far away that would be no parallax? So you're gonna, you're gonna continue. So if you looked at uh, question, this one, question one, if you kept going back, back, back and well off the paper, could you get so far away that this wouldn't exist anymore? That there is no shift. So that's what that question is asking. Question eight, draw a diagram that illustrates the observance of parallax of a distant star from earth. Your drawing should include and be labeled with the following characteristics. The sun should be on your drawing. The diameter of the Earth's orbit should be on your drawing, and that's the baseline. The star being observed and the background of stars should be shown. So basically, you're going to draw a diagram like this, and you're going to label it with those things. The baseline is the orbit of the Earth. And everything else stays the same. That's your tip, your hint, hint. Number nine, why did not observing parallax slow acceptance of heliocentrism? Remember in heliocentrism, the sun is in the center of the universe and the earth orbits the sun. So if they couldn't see parallax happening, why did people, why did that cause heliocentrism to be rejected until parallax could be seen. What's the connection there? All right, that's it. If you have any additional questions, you can ask me personally or an email. Have a good day.